Fear does not exist in this dojo or this podcast, does it? Welcome to Beyond the Rut, the podcast about pursuing and achieving your dreams without compromising your faith, your family, or your health. I'm your host, Jerry Dugan, and in just a moment, you and I are going to start a three-part series of lessons learned from the show Cobra Kai. Now, if you're familiar with the show on Netflix, you know where we're going. If not, get Netflix, watch that show, and if you don't plan to, stick around, listen anyway. But just know that once you go past this point, there will be spoilers. We're going to talk about the show, some of its details, but then the lessons drawn from that so that you can be inspired and equipped to live your life beyond the rut. Now, that's what we're up to. For the next three weeks, we're going to look at the three characters, Johnny Lawrence, Daniel LaRusso, and John Kreese. What were the ruts they faced in the show? What were some examples? How did they get out of that? But also, if you're facing a similar rut in your life, what are some practical steps you can take to get out of those ruts and live the life you've always dreamed of living? So sit back and relax, get that remote control handy so that after this episode, you can watch an episode or two of Cobra Kai as we tackle the first of those characters, Johnny Lawrence and overcoming limiting beliefs. Here we go. All right. Hey, Rudder Nation. This is Jerry. I never left. I just kind of stepped back for a second, step right back to the microphone. But this is part one of a series that is based on a series, and that is the Netflix show Cobra Kai. Now, I'm going to let you know, spoilers are ahead. So if you want to watch the show first to have some context, to get some entertainment, then go do that and come right back. This episode is not going anywhere. This series is not going anywhere. Uh, now, if you want to listen to this first and then go watch the show with that context, you're welcome to do that too. Now, what is Cobra Kai? I, th I think we got to lay down that, uh, that groundwork first. Now, if you've heard of the movie Karate Kid with Ralph Macchio, Pat Morita, uh, Morita, um, about a kid who moved from New Jersey to California, gets bullied, learns karate to save himself, fights in a tournament, and wins the show as the underdog, wins the movie, wins the fight, wins the tournament with the famous 1984 crane kick. That's where he brings his arms up high, his knee up, and when Johnny comes in to make his attack, bam, kick to the face, Johnny goes down, three points, Danny LaRue says the winner, and then off we go. Now, part two comes around in 1985, and now Danny LaRusso has broken up with his girlfriend, Allie. Uh, he's going into the summer before he's supposed to go off to college. And his mentor and his sensei, Mr. Miyagi, has to go to Okinawa. And so, you know, part two of Karate Kid is the story of Danny LaRusso learning about Mr. Miyagi's background, his history, his heritage, and in doing so, learning more about himself growing and becoming the young man that he had the potential of becoming. And then you go into part three and some critics will tell you that's the part we all wish was never made. You know, uh, Ralph Macchio did not look like a teenager anymore. He definitely aged in a few years. Um, there was a big break between the movies apparently. And the, the press, the premise behind that movie was John Kreese is still down and out. And, Things aren't going well. John Kreese, if you don't know, is the sensei of Johnny Lawrence. Johnny Lawrence was the, the young man who bullied Danny LaRusso in the first movie. Uh, totally absent in the second and third movie is Johnny Lawrence. But John Kreese, we find out in the third movie, is just hitting the bottom of the, the well in a sense. Life has not been good for John, Laura, or John Kreese in the years since his dojo fell apart. All his fault. Well, he partners up with a guy named Terry Silver, a very wealthy buddy of his, and the two of them determine that they're going to torture and torment, not tor torture in terms of physical torture, but they're going to make Danny LaRusso's life a living hell. They're going to get him to fight in the All Valley Tournament again, and they have a ringer who's going to come in from the East Coast and completely embarrass Danny LaRusso. And the idea is that this will demolish Miyagi-Do Karate and raise Cobra Kai back up in the forefront as a really tough as nails dojo. So that was the 1980s for me. You know, I watched a lot of movies. Karate Kid series was one of those many movies I watched growing up. 
I uh, wasn't a big fan of part three, but that's okay. You fast forward 34 years later to the first season of Cobra Kai. And we are now looking at Johnny Lawrence's life 34 years later. He's broke. He's probably depressed. He drinks a lot of Coors banquet beer. And he loves the movie Iron Eagle for some reason. Another movie I grew up watching, by the way. It, it just looks like life sucks for Johnny Lawrence. Again, he was the bad guy in the first Karate Kid movie. So why would we care about Johnny Lawrence? And I, I think people didn't really think about it or care about it until just a few years back. There was a parody music video that came out called Sweep the Leg. Uh, and it was, <laughs> it was a parody of Johnny Lawrence still stuck in losing that match his senior year in high school. And he just watches the video over and over and over again of him taking the kick to the face and hearing John Kreese, his sensei's voice telling him, sweep the leg, sweep the leg. And so they go through this whole daydream in this music video. This is again, a few years back. And it's about what if Johnny did fight back? What if Johnny did sweep the leg? That kind of thing. And it's very funny. If you want, go look it up on YouTube later on. Uh, and it's the, uh, the Johnny Lawrence. I think, uh, I think you just type in sweep the leg, Johnny, and it'll pop up. And it's, it's funny. It's worth, if I find it, I'll put it in the show notes of this episode. Uh, because I think that in part inspired the series. I don't know for sure. I probably could have done some more research here. Uh, but in essence, episode one, season one of Cobra Kai, we meet Johnny. He's down and out. Life has not been good to him in the 34 years since the All Valley Tournament. Um, and we later find out that he can't hold a job down. He's always getting fired. He's always broke. He's always trying to hawk his belongings just to make enough cash or get enough cash to buy more beer and wallow in his misery while he sits in his apartment watching Iron Eagle over and over and over again. And that starts a shift for him, but there's other things. Now, before I go into the shift, there's some other things going on in Johnny's life that are not so great. Uh, he's always holding on to the girl that got away, Allie from the movie, the very first movie as well. You know, the, he had the girl, but things didn't work out. And then this guy, Daniel LaRusso comes in from out of town and like steals the girl from him, picks on him all the time. And so you, you see that Johnny's got a different perspective. He's been the victim here in his eyes. Um, now, another thing is that turns out Johnny is a dad somewhere in the last 34 years. And we'll, if we do the math, we'll say in the last 17 years, uh, <laughs> uh, he, he became a dad and he has zero relationship with that son. Uh, the son's name is Robbie uh, in, in the series Cobra Kai. Uh, he's a 17 year old, just get into all kinds of trouble. He's, you know, just in with the wrong crowd, always stealing stuff, that kind of thing. And again, Johnny has no connection with this guy at all. Not, not a daily relationship. There's no respect or love from Robbie to Johnny. And um, in all this, there is a very consistent theme in Johnny's life. He has limiting beliefs all throughout the circles of his life. He's jumping from job to job rather than pursuing his dream because he doesn't feel like he deserves anything more than that. He doesn't put his best foot out to get the jobs that he really wants to get. He doesn't feel like he's a good enough dad. And so that's why he hasn't been in his son's life the whole time. He's walked out since day one. And you'll learn about that in later episodes of the later seasons. Um, he even, even though he reopens Cobra Kai, there are moments where he walks out on them multiple times throughout the show because he doesn't feel like he's good enough to be their sensei. And these are all things that hold Johnny back from the potential he really has and to have a positive impact, which we start to see when he does come around. So that in essence is the first rut we're going to talk about is overcoming those limiting beliefs. You know, what do you do when you're the one talking yourself out of things? When you're believing before you even start to think about success, 
You've already talked yourself out of that success. And maybe you've come to that somewhere in your life. Maybe you hit a failure of some kind. Maybe you dropped out of college and you always pick on yourself that you're not worthy of a promotion because you're not smart enough, or you're not worthy to lead a group of people because people laugh at you. You think people laugh at you. Maybe you feel like, like Johnny, you're not worthy of a good, healthy relationship with somebody because who in their right mind would want to go out with you? Now, these are beliefs within yourself. And now what Johnny starts to realize, and this kind of happens happenstance because this happens, I believe in the very first episode where, you know, his car has been wrecked. He's got a loner. No, he's got his car back. Sorry. His car had been, it was about to get hit, but he's just, he's at a gas station. Here we go. That's the part I want to start with. First episode, he's sitting at a gas station or a convenience store and he's eating, you know, the, the pizza that comes out of the, the heat warmer that they have at the convenience stores. So, you know, not a very nutritious meal. It's just him sitting in front of his car in a parking lot, eating this pizza. And along comes a kid who's picking up Pepto-Bismol for his uh, grandmother, I believe. And right away, he's getting picked on by four bullies from high school. And, you know, Johnny, you know, he's, he's the anti-hero. <laughs> he's, he's not going to jump in like Danny LaRusso and be like, hey, you leave that kid alone. You know, go pick on somebody your own size. Like he's not Mr. Miyagi either who sees this kid is in trouble and jumps in to save the day. Johnny is the anti-hero here. He just wants to eat his pizza and he wants these kids to stay away from his car, which is his car from, you know, back in the day, you know, the 1980s, it's a Pontiac Firebird. So here's a guy who's also stuck in the eighties. He hasn't really grown. He's peaked in high school in a sense, but he's drawn in the moment. One of these kids is thrown onto his car. And when he says something about that, that's when he's drawn into the fight and he beats up, of course, Mr. Miyagi style, but cooler, uh, the four bullies and rescues the, the one guy being picked on. And that starts the relationship of sensei and student or mentor and mentee. And it's in that relationship as he's pouring into somebody that student actually is pouring back into him. And it's the student Miguel who is showing respect to Johnny and giving encouragement to Johnny and asking Johnny, teach me to be able to defend myself. Teach me to be like you. Teach me to be able to defend myself against these guys. And here's the key thing though. We get encouraged all the time. Johnny's getting encouraged by Miguel. None of that mattered until Johnny accepted it. And I, I want you to hear that for yourself. People are probably encouraging you every single day, whether it's at work, at home, out and about in the community. The question is, are you accepting that encouragement? Because for Johnny, the moment he accepted that Miguel wanted Johnny's wisdom and knowledge about karate, please help me defend myself. That's when Johnny was reborn. It's when he realized I do have skills now that people need and want and are willing to pay for. So he uses the resources he has. And of course you got to watch the show. Well, you, if, if you're here, you know, spoiler alerts, he takes the money from his stepdad, opens up a dojo and Miguel is his only student for pretty much the whole first season. And, uh, and he's just applying everything he knows, everything I know from when I was a Cobra Kai back in my high school days, that's what I'm passing on to you. Going to make you awesome. Going to make you tough. Going to make the world better. That's my vision. Now pay me my money, uh, and, and clean the toilets and fix that over there. So he starts to realize he has worth, he has value. He has something that somebody else wants for a price and that starts to turn things around, but none of that mattered until Johnny accepted that encouragement. And over time we see that he starts to slowly believe it as well, because 
throughout the ups and downs of seasons one, two, three, and four, we see that Johnny has walked out on his students and somebody else swoops in and takes his dojo from him. You know, he, he walks out of an alliance between Eagle Fang Karate and Miyagi-Do Karate uh, later on in season four, I believe. And that holds him back. You know, seeing that he's not good enough to teach his students to, to stand down and let somebody else take over. That hurts him. That limits him. And we kind of see the same thing with his parenting. You know, he doesn't, and he says in the show that he walked out on the birth of his, on the day his son was born, he was not there because he realized he wasn't, a, he wasn't going to be a good father. He didn't know how to be a father, a good father at that to his newborn son. And so rather than face that challenge head on, he walks out, he, he runs from the challenge. So he let that doubt sink in and dictate his next step. Now, 17 years later, he wants to be a part of that child's life. You know, that child is back in his life. He's seen the road that his son is going down and he doesn't want his son to go down that road, but he's missed out on 17 years of being a part of that son's life. And he's trying to make up for it. And it's not until he starts to accept the situation that he's in and realize, okay, all that is done. All I could do is be here for him now. And we start to see that open up finally at the end of season four. So just to recap so far, we talked about the limiting beliefs that Johnny Lawrence has had on himself where not a good enough teacher, not a good enough for any field or profession. I've got nothing of value to give. I want you to just leave me alone. Stay away from me. And where's my money? You know, that kind of guy. Uh, and then as a father, you know, he, he doesn't feel like he could be a father. So he's been out of his son's life uh, to the point where it's almost too late for him to ever have any kind of relationship with his son. And things turn around. You know, the first thing, first things first is recognizing that people are already encouraging you and accept it accept it as truth. They see something you're ignoring or choosing not to know. And that is something that I would count as step one. If just take a step back, pause, are people encouraging you right now and you're consistently shooting it down? If that's the case, we're going to have to flip that switch. Stop denying that encouragement, accept that current encouragement, let it sink in. And ask yourself the question after that, what if they're right? You know, what if you're the person to lead this team? What if you're the person that this woman really loves or vice versa? You know, what could be if what these folks are saying about you to encourage you is true? Now, another step is you may have to admit, you could be your own problem. Your limiting beliefs may be the reason why you haven't reached the goal that you want to achieve. And if that's the case, you, you got to be able to admit that. So step number two, take a step back, realize you might be the problem and it, it's the limiting beliefs. It's the negative self-talk. So may, just maybe. So you got to be open to that as well. Step number three. So if we're going in steps now, um, Get an outside perspective, you know, that I, you kind of already get that with this whole step of if people are encouraging you, listen to it, accept it. So you jump forward to step number three now. And what I'm saying is get more information. If somebody's encouraging you, ask them, what is it you see in me that makes what you're saying true? What is it you see that is holding me back? Because the people around you, especially the people closest to you, the ones who are supportive, they're seeing things from an angle you don't. Now, there are also naysayers in your life, and they're probably just wanting to shoot you down left and right. You may just want to tell them to go take a hike, and that's okay. But if you have somebody who's encouraging you, and they're willing to give you input, solid, honest, no strings attached input, ask for it, receive it, and, and think about it. You know, okay, or they, they see me, they perceive me as this. I thought I was here, but I'm really over there. Okay. So once you get that outside perspective, you can now start to shift your self-talk. 
So if you're telling yourself already, I'm not a good father, I don't have what it takes to be a father. And people are telling you, look, you've got every opportunity in the world to be the best dad ever. And you've gotten some information from them, some perspective from them. And now you know where the gaps are Shift it around. I am my child's father. I am the kind of man who wants to be there for my child. And once you start saying those I am's in a positive way, <laughs> you got no choice. Oh, well, you got a choice. But now you've got some momentum. You've got some spark that has you going in the direction you want to go in, which is to be that engaged father, to be that engaged, say, husband, to be that coworker that people can count on, to be the person in the project who brings all the pieces together at just the right time to be the person who came back from a failure because you know, just because we failed one time doesn't mean we always have to be that failure. We can bounce back from that. You can learn from your mistakes. And that's one of the things we see Johnny do as well. He starts to learn from his mistakes. He gets to have a meeting with Allie in one of the seasons, I believe season three, and she gives him some insight by allowing him to visit the past. She allows him to learn enough about himself to propel him into the future. So that is something to keep in mind as well. Now, so up to this point, you started to accept the encouragement that's coming in. You've opened yourself up to the possibility that you could be your own problem. You've gotten outside information from people you trust who have given you some good balanced insights about yourself. And you've also shifted your self-talk to I am the thing you want to be the positive spin on what you want to be either as a father, a husband, a professional in your fitness, whatever it is. Here's the last thing. Courageously commit to do something different. Courageously commit. And to do that, you got to take responsibility for new action. It's not somebody else's responsibility It's your responsibility to have this mindset shift to have this self-talk shift, to get rid of your limiting beliefs, that's on nobody but you. So you gotta know when to take in encouragement, when to take in feedback. When you take in constructive feedback, put it in the frame of where you're going, not a barrier of why you shouldn't even try. We're all gonna make mistakes. They say that the average millionaire who runs a business had 17 businesses prior to that that failed. So they're willing to take a failure that any one of us can experience. And they turn that around into something positive that teaches them and propels them into the future. They didn't wallow in it and say, oh, geez, you know, we couldn't get the touchscreens thing to work on this phone. That's it. This world will never have touchscreen phones. Or, you know, Edison, oh, man, I wanted this light that worked off electricity, but I failed the first try. You know, <laughs> no, they got back up. They know I'm going to create a phone. This is Steve Jobs at Apple said, we're going to create a phone that changes the way people do mobile communication, that changes our interaction with the internet, that changes our interaction and in how we consume media. You know, Edison said, we're going to change how people light their homes. He probably said a lot more than that. He probably didn't even say those words. But that in essence was him going after the light bulb. So courageously commit, take responsibility for your action, your new action, and take a risk. You know, you're, you're doing a new thing. You know, being in a rut is doing what you think is the safe bet. The reality is if you go for the safe bet all the time and you're not taking a risk to do a new thing, you're actually falling behind. You're failing in that sense. So getting stuck in a rut is not a groove. It, it could be the easy path. It could be the easy button. But when it comes to your dreams and living a life that you feel is worth living, being stuck and comfortable in your rut is not the way to go. You got to have the courage and the commitment, the responsibility and the risk to get out of that rut. So with that said, we're about 26 minutes in. And we talked about the rut that Johnny Lawrence faced in the show Cobra Kai, how he was just stuck in the rut 
of negative self-talk, of limiting beliefs. And we see in the four seasons of the show that he gradually pulls himself out of that because he starts to listen to the encouragement from people on the outside. He starts to internalize that maybe he is the guy to teach these kids to live better, to live through courage, <clears throat> excuse me, and that he is the teacher to teach them. And we're going to talk about, so I'd love to hear from you guys. There we go. That's what I want to say. I want to hear from you guys. Email me info at beyond the rut.com. Put in the subject header, Cobra Kai, Johnny Lawrence, and then tell me, what did you learn from this episode? What are some of the lessons you've come across when it comes to overcoming limiting beliefs? Or maybe tell me what a struggle is you're facing and we can work together to get beyond that rut, to get beyond that limiting belief. Maybe you have no idea what is the limiting belief. You just know something doesn't quite seem right and I'm not achieving the dream that I want to achieve. Reach out to me, info at beyondtherut.com. Let's see if we can talk through it. It'll probably just be an email exchange and that's fine. Uh, I don't have any like coaching services set up or anything like that, uh, but I'd love to help you out. You know, shoot me an email again, info at beyondtherut.com. Tell me about Cobra Kai. Tell me about lessons you've picked up on that are beyond the rut type of lessons. Tell me about a limiting belief that you're facing, a situation you're facing. You can't even identify what the limiting belief is. I'd like, I just want to get the conversation going. Uh, if you just want to talk about your favorite parts in the show, shoot me an email there too. Cause I will talk about the show for quite a while until the next thing I binge watch probably. Uh, so good thing. This is a three part series. Cause <laughs> that gives me enough time to move on to the next thing. Right. Uh, squirrel. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, now I hope you like everything I talked about in this episode. I do hope to hear from some of you, if not all of you. And if you found value in this, hit the share button on however you're listening to this or watching this right now and send it off to somebody you feel also like the show Cobra Kai or likes to talk about overcoming limiting beliefs and just share this, get the conversation going, open people's minds, unlock whatever is holding people back. And you could do that either by using this to spark conversation, using the topic of this to spark conversation or using this episode to do that as well. You know, like, Hey, listen to this and then tell me what you think. Uh, it helps my download numbers. So that's, that's really cool, but that's not why I put this together. I put this together because I'm excited about Cobra Kai. I'm excited that I picked up on this lesson and I get to share it with you. And that to me is just fun, fun, uh, so much fun. I'm willing to bump the rest of my inventory by three weeks just to do this. Now you can find the show notes to this episode at beyond the rut.com slash two nine zero. We're just 10 episodes away from hitting 300. How cool is that? I'm, I, if I can find a Spartan, then that's going to be who I talk with on. I uh, probably can't find a Spartan from Thermopylae, but um, yeah. So beyond the rut.com slash two nine zero. You'll find the show notes to this episode. Uh, links to Netflix, Cobra Kai, uh, maybe some other episodes that uh, we've talked about limiting beliefs, how to dream bigger. There's some blog posts that we've written about. Um, so yeah, just, just so excited. So there you have it. Share this with somebody, you know, go check out the show notes and until next week, go live life beyond the rut. Take care.